Welcome back, everybody. Another episode of Factorio C Block. This is episode number 17. Today, we are going to be making sulfuric acid. And we're going to be making a lot of sulfuric acid. It's kind of like the iron plate of the chemical world in C Block in that we get access to it early. We needed it initially just to melt the slag to make our iron plates and copper plates when we first started. But in the end game, just like iron, it is needed damn near everywhere. So I've been trying to think of a system on how to produce it and also how to distribute it that's going to make sense for the base that we're building. And what we're going to do, we're going to use this thing, the barreling pump, which is added in Angel's Refining. And it is just like in vanilla when you barrel up something in an assembly machine, only it's much faster. This thing can barrel two barrels per second. So that's 500 sulfuric acid just from this thing. And what we're going to do, we're going to put those barrels on a belt on our main bus and it's going to run through our base just like any of our other vital materials. If you think about the throughput, that may seem a little strange to put uh, barrels on your main bus instead of through a pipe, but uh, the longer distance you run something through a pipe, you run into all kinds of throughput issues, the pipe gets clogged up, you can't push things through far enough. This is gonna have way more throughput than that. A yellow belt, and this is, if we'll probably end up upgrading it to red, but just a yellow belt, will push 12.3 items per second, let's just say 12 for simplicity's sake, each barrel is 250 sulfuric acid. That's 3,000 sulfuric acid per second pushed through our base just from this thing. Initially, we're not going to need that much, but that uh, it's it doesn't seem like that much. But once you actually look at the math, it is a ton of sulfuric acid we can push through our base like that. And we need it in all kinds of places. The place we're going to deliver it today where we need it right now is down here to produce our copper ingots. We need sulfuric acid for that, and that will help supplement our copper production, which will help us make more machines faster to help us expand into this next phase much faster. And then we'll continue adding to other things. If we change to the uh, the advanced lead recipe, which we probably will now, that was the thing keeping me from wanting to do it, was the sulfuric acid. Uh, we can now make the lead ingots like that. We will need sulfuric acid to get these crystals here, these uh, steratite or sapphirite. I can't remember which blue that one is. But you need sulfuric acid there. We need it for this guy. We need it for this guy. We need it uh, for iron ingots here, which is, this is the wrong recipe, but we need it there. We'll need it for this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. We also need it for batteries. We need it all over the place. So we're gonna be making a ton of it. And I was thinking of how we're going to get the sulfur. And we're gonna get the sulfur from our chemical plant here. This is a different way to get sulfur than we have been in the past. In the past, we've been using the sulfuric wastewater loop, which is required to make all of our machines because we need the, uh, the mineral sludge. And you get the sulfuric wastewater in a positive loop through that. And that's how we've been getting all of our sulfur there. But um, we're not going to be generating sulfuric wastewater through this process because all we want is the sulfuric acid. And while this does generate a net positive amount of uh, sulfuric acid, it's it's really not efficient. It, it's designed to produce mineral sludge. It's not designed to produce sulfuric acid. So we want sulfuric acid as a thing. Uh, so we're going to use, let's see, where are we? This process, which is what we've already been using. We are making sulfuric acid from sulfur dioxide gas and purified water. The sulfur dioxide gas is getting made from sulfur and oxygen gas. These two are the same. But the new sulfur process is this. We are making it from hydrogen sulfide gas. And this is kind of a, um, these two recipes are kind of hidden. If you look through them in the tech tree or in NEI, it looks like you haven't researched them, but they've been enabled especially for the mod pack. Uh, it's a little bit weird and it kind of confusing at first. We're going to make it like this. We need hydrogen sulfide gas. We're going to get it through this process from the advanced chemical plant. We're going to be doing it by cracking coal into coke. We're also going to get, as a byproduct, benzene and methane. And uh, for now, we're going to just get rid of those two things. We'll pro I'll probably store a bit just in case we need some here and there. Uh, and if we need some later, we'll be processing it and we can stop burning it off and start using it. But we're going to get our... Let's see, what, where were we? Hydrogen sulfide gas from this guy. And we, this, we're gonna put this plant here. This is where all of our coal is being produced. And this is also where our coal, our coke is being produced as well. And since all that stuff's being produced right here, I figure we put this right here. And we might just entirely supplant this process of making coke, which is uh, taking the coal, 
crushing it into crushed coal and then smelting it into coke. Because now we're going to be getting a lot of coke from this process and we're also getting coke from, uh, we're also cracking our coal into coke to get our uh, naphtha and mineral oil, all this stuff. We'll see. We'll see how that works out. Now, the one big decision to make is uh, how are we getting oxygen? Because we're going to need oxygen for this guy. This guy needs oxygen to make sulfur dioxide and gas. We need oxygen for this guy to make sulfur. Um, what's this guy doing? Okay, so the two ways to get it is we can either use the old process, the electrolyzer, where we get uh, oxygen and hydrogen split from purified water, or we can use the air filter, which compresses air and then separates that into nitrogen and oxygen. And I looked at it. Here's the different things we need for our current needs, just, just to basically to support the copper production we're going to need. Just to support the copper production, and the copper production does not just include this. I'm, I'm including the uh, basically triple this amount because this is only one third of our total copper we're going to need. So just to support the amount of copper we need, we either need seven electrolyzer Mark threes and three hydro plants making purified water to support these guys, or we need 16 air filters and five chemical plants. And I actually looked at it. They look like about the same size. This one is slightly smaller, and you might think that it uses more power because these things pull 400 uh, megawatts a piece. 7, 7 times uh, 400, 2800 plus 750 is 3500. I just put down lights to let me remember the number. 3.5 megawatts for this part. Or all of this, the, the air filters do pull much less power, 150 instead of 400. But we got a lot more of them, and we also have these chemical plants. So this one is going to be 3,900 megawatts, or uh, uh, kilowatts. 3.9 megawatts for all of this, and it takes up more space. So I think what we'll actually do is we, uh, we're we going to use this process right here. We're going to use three hydro plants. And what we'll probably do, we want this to be able to scale up, so I'm going to try to make this in one unit, and then next time we need... Sulfuric acid, I'll just probably double it up or something like that. And voila, here is the build. I've got each element fairly well separated, so it's easy to not only expand them, but pick them up and move them around. Like if I have to add more of these guys making naphtha, we can move this stuff around. None of this stuff is making physical items except for the sulfur guys here. So it won't fill up my inventory, unlike, for instance, this, which might fill up with mud if I had to pick that up. But let's plug it in, just make sure everything is set up properly, watch it all produce, and then um, and then I guess we'll start laying down the belt, head it over towards our the new base section. So saline water should be getting burnt off, one of those should be fine. Then the purified water is coming down here. Oh wait, do we need purified? Yeah, we need purified water way over here as well, I forgot about that. Okay, uh, well, let's do something about that. Do we want to go up and over, or maybe just straight through here? Would be the best. In fact, I do have a space right through there. If we just do this, I might have to add some pumps, because that's a little bit of a distance. It's not the most extreme distance ever. No, this will probably be fine, uh, but I, I will keep my eye on it. To here, and then to, I think, there. And we will just run this on down. That should be, this. those things uh, should be producing enough. I'm fairly certain I accounted for both sources of purified water when I did the formulas and whatever. And let's see, is this, um, is this enough to burn off all of that? Perhaps not. I do have to add a second one in other builds where we, uh, let's just do that. In other builds where I've got eight or more of those. I know for 12, I definitely do. Uh, okay, and then these guys, we need to connect this belt up. Instead of just going to here, it's going to be going all the way up and around. And the main problem with this is that we're going to be uh, cracking all of our coal into coke, or a lot of our coal into coke. The problem is that we're not really consuming coke, coke super fast at the moment. And so the whole thing's going to shut down as soon as this coke line fills up. Let's grab this I just picked up and dump it in there. Okay, so they are being all cracked. Okay, that's these guys are so noisy. And then, oh, did I forget the I for, forgot the inserters? Okay, so this is let's see, craft speed 1.5. It's outputting six. Let's just go ahead and do uh, fast inserters. 
Possibly not necessary, because I think I updated my uh, stack capacity. Or oh, that's the wrong one. Yeah, they can do three at a time. Probably slow ones are fine. I think that's enough for one side of the belt. If I may have to uh, also adjust that. I think we're getting like 10 something per second. So that should be fine for one side of that. Oh no, no, that that is too much. Okay, yeah, we do need to, uh, I need to separate these a little bit and provide room to change the side of the belt. I don't know if I really have space with how compact I have it as it exists. But just to make sure that everything's connected up, like from A to B and everything, everything is producing, I'll, I'll fix it later. This seems to be operating. This has not gotten ca uh, sulfur yet. We don't need a belt there. Let's dump in the sulfur there. You've got plenty of purified wire. And then the sulfur dioxide gas coming in here. We have to make the barrels and we have to lay down the belt. So all that, all everything's producing. We can fine tune it and optimize it later. We're going to run the belt over here around the other side of our fish tank. And looking at our fish tank, I think something like this is going to be the proper size for it. So I think, whoops, that is not landfill. That's landfill. Let's just go straight down right here. Right around the outside. And there's some worms right there on the left. We might need to murder. Get wrecked, worm. Small worms, one shot. Okay, all the way down here, I've outlined more or less the uh, the area we need to fill in for the next section of the, the other half of our smelting area. A lot of landfill left to be made. I'm probably going to make... I'm probably going to double or triple this up because this is making fairly fast landfill. It's not making it fast enough. There's 18K sitting there. And from last episode, we know that we can get rid of 30k landfill in the, the in just a jiffy snap of our fingers. Okay, let me look up here. Uh, I think we'll just run it, I guess on the outside is fine. So we want to run down the belt because that's faster. And uh, this is the return belt. We also want to be making uh, a lot of... Whoops. We want to be making this button here. We want to be making barrels. There we go, that takes one steel. So probably just one of these is fine considering how much one of these will hold. So we'll just do it uh, like this, I guess. Run this over here to our return line. And he's just going to uh, get us started making barrels. So let's give him some power and a light bulb thing. There we go. Mm, I'm, I'll, probably, I'll probably ramp that up eventually, but for now that's okay. Run the line back. Run the line back both ways. Okay, so the belts are hooked up. The sulfuric acid barrels, they're on their way to their first destination. Their currently only destination, which is the copper. And uh, we did have the problem I foresaw where we're not using the coke fast enough and the line is clogged up. So we're not producing as much as I'd like. That will partially be alleviated once all of this starts kicking in. We start using our metals more. We'll start using up the coke and uh, the carbon, which is fueling stuff and all that kind of stuff. I st I'm still not sure that's going to be enough. And we're going to have to come up with some other solution. We might start siphoning off our... We might start st siphoning off that stuff to turn into solid fuel. Or we might uh, fire up more steam engines just to use more of the stuff. Use more of our power from the steam engines than we currently are. Something like that, we're going to have to figure out. We've got a decent stockpile. We can at least uh, make sure that what I have set up works after it gets all the way down the belt. It will take a while for this belt to fill up. If we can figure out how we're going to consume enough coke to keep this production running, uh, then this belt should be able to supply us. For basically the, the middle game, we might have to red, upgrade it to a red belt eventually, but uh, this should be good for now. Let's make sure this works. I don't know why it wouldn't. I just haven't uh, seen it in action yet. Here they come. There we go. And there's the ones on the return. And sooner or later, I can actually, uh, I can at least for, for now, turn off the barrel production up to the right, but... Uh, no reason not to let it go for now. And ba bam Look at everything fly into action. And the copper! See what I'm talking about? Look at that throughput! Okay, this should be, once it's at full capacity, about one red... It should be one full red belt, and it looks like it's there with a few minor gaps. And I would have to go through and just, like, uh, troubleshoot it. 
Looks pretty good. We are only outputting half of it back up to the main base here. But half of a red belt is one, one yellow belt, and that's way more throughput than we had before. This should massively... Let's go, let's go follow it up here. This, this should massively speed things up. And we might just put a few more band-aids on our current smelting layout. Okay, let me let the... Uh, there, tell you what, let's actually... Uh, let's, let's ride this mind-blowing thing. <laughs> transportation system back up here. Is this faster than the... This is a, the, the exactly the same speed as that red belt, actually. Now that I think about it. Uh, we no longer need copper ore or iron ore from our main layout because we're getting all of that and as well as the steel from below. So I might pick up a lot of this. Right now, we're currently sorting like this because we need the aluminium. Uh, we do need the zinc. We need gold, stuff like that. Uh, I might... Um, now that we've... Oh, this is out of... I guess that ran out of carbon or fuel or whatever but now that we're resupplying supplying all this from below we might be able to pick up a lot of this and streamline this so it's not quite so messy these guys should be operating yes oh the circuits are gonna be being produced so much faster now look at that just race down the line that should also help our science production quite a bit oh yes this guy needs Five copper plates for each little guy. This guy needs eight. So that is taking up a lot of that. We've got some uh, copper waste product stuff getting getting sorted back into copper ore. Okay, lovely. I'm not sure exactly what we'll do with this in the... Um, how exactly we're going to get this back into our ore system once we update to our, our, mid our middle game layout. Haven't quite thought of that. We might use the logistics robots for that, because that's kind of like a... They can handle that kind of thing. They can handle small amounts of throughput over very long distances until we get their speed up way higher. Oh, yes. Look at the science go. It's amazing. Well, I think the temporary solution to our issue regarding consuming enough coke is just going to be to stockpile some solid fuel. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to set up like a little daisy chain here. So we have some chests that will get filled up. There goes that science. That was quick. We've got gem processing done. Just sort of planning for the future what sort of sciences we need. Geode crystallization. I'm not really, uh, I haven't really looked ahead to what kind of what kind of thing we need to do next. We really don't need any of this next. Uh, advanced Titanium, we will need that for the next science. Let's do that one, I guess. So it'll take a little while to fill up all of these. That'll help consume the, uh, the coke here to keep these guys in business. Now the sulfur has continued. This line is basically... Let's see, uh, follow this line back down the line. Let's run down the belt. Let's see how far down the the barrels have have reached. Uh, we might be able to turn off our barrel producer for the moment. Eventually, we'll need to fill both sides of the belt, but that's a lot of barrels right now. Yeah, it looks like we have enough. They're being produced right here. Well, we would like them more or less filled. Maybe I'll wait until they uh, fill up the rest of the belt. So I'll just keep that the way it is for now. We still need to rebuild our coolant area. But it seems like this area is uh, producing very quickly. Now it's time to grab a bunch of landfill, try to fill this in. And probably double or triple or quadruple up our landfill production. Alright, so that amount of landfill is clearly not going to be adequate. So we're going to triple up our production here with just a flu a few blueprint drops there's one and then we will space out this uh this substation needs to go and i think that one right there is fine yeah ploppity drop ploppity drop ploppity drop get to work robots okay so i should have enough in my inventory for them to uh put down all of that stuff i put down the amount they had uh, stored up and there's this weird thing that happens with the grass when you drive around it's sort of connects to itself and grows as you connect up the normal default landfill. The other stuff doesn't do that, so we end up with these like these weird drawings on the ground, which is 
further making my uh, landfill production like this weird avant-garde art thing. It looks like an alien proboscis or something. I'm not sure. We're going to fill in the rest of this, kill the remaining aliens. And uh, now that we're producing more materials, we're going to ramp up the the layout of all of this stuff next episode and probably clean up our uh, our old base just a bit. Now that we've replaced three of the, uh, the starter metals, uh, let's start at this end so that you guys can start producing as soon as the pumps get placed. Good. Okay, so, oh, they need power because the substations aren't connected until we place this substation. Okay, let's do that. And for now, let's see, do we want, I think for now we're just going to keep things as beltless as possible. So we'll keep these three chests separate. I could just drive by in the car and pick things up three times. No big deal. Now things are powered. Okay, so we got the second one online. It's an exact duplicate of, oh, no, it's not an exact duplicate. Yeah, because I did not update the blueprint after I added extra of these flare stacks. I think that should be the only difference, though. So I just need to add... I need to add one here. Like a so. And then I need another oxygen one. And I think that's the only difference. Just to make sure that the, the oxygen and the hydrogen are being burnt off properly. The proper rates. Well, bam. Okay, let's run down here and get these guys all filled up. I should be. A, can I still run through here? No, I'm gonna cut off as the pipe gets dropped. Okay, I made it through. All right, can't run down the middle there. You can only run down the sides. Okay, there we go. One more guy. We have a super duper slow poke. He's trying to get back to me for charge. He's carrying the item. But he can't drop it off because... Oh, is he trying to pick it up from me? What is he doing? Is he, he's out of charge. He had to charge it up. That's what it was. Okay, there we go. Tripled up landfill production. Eventually, we'll uh, start adding speed modules and down the line uh, beacons. Beacons and speed modules and productivity modules and all that kind of stuff. One thing at a time, though. Okay, that should help. This guy's got 1,700. This guy's got a few hundred. And we still have our old producers up here. We will get rid of these eventually, but not for a while. 7.7K in that one. This guy's got like 1,000-ish. This one has about 1,000. All that, all those powers combined, hopefully can fill in all of this stuff. That's going to do it for the episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Oh, and I guess I suppose we have this as well. A little supplement. We'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.